G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and unfortunately I'm traveling and can't produce original content for these couple of weeks, but fortunately I have some awesome special guests who will be filling in and today we have the privilege of having a video produced by Robert who is a comic book artist and very, very talented and today he's going to walk you all through different methods of composition and framing for comic books, how to use frames, setting pace, guiding the reader's eye, it's going to be great. I'll leave you in his capable hands and of course if you enjoy his presentation style and his content I highly recommend you check out his YouTube channel. Otherwise that's everything I had to say for now and I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Robert. Thank you Robert for putting this video together for my viewers. If you enjoy his stuff make sure to check out his channel and until next time I will see you later. Take it away Robert. Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics, and today I'm going to give you a little bit of a demonstration on how I would work out some composition and comic book panel layouts. So I've got this basic uh, 11 by 17 scale that I drew up for you and some very basic panels to explain uh, some of the key factors in designing and developing your story uh, with this. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And the first thing that I always try to keep in mind when designing a new page uh, is where I'm at in the narrative and, and storytelling. So say I'm you know, getting ready to explain a new uh, scene and a new um, part of the story, I would first start off with an establishing shot. And all that is is basically where we're at in the story. Let's, let's give the reader some information. So say the establishing shot is, we'll say a... Uh, traditional city and we're looking down on the city a little bit so we'll do some basic perspective lines and this this stage isn't going to be pretty because I'm not trying to refine my artwork at this stage I'm just basically getting the idea and the process down or the uh, concepts down so I'll just draw some very rough kind of city built you know city shapes forgive my crude illustrations here so we will say that the writer gave us a story that, you know, we need to be looking down on said city and we see some buildings of various sizes and maybe a little bit of the streetways and yada yada and just kind of block that in. So we get the, the concept down. Now as far as composition and storytelling goes, Obviously, the storytelling is the information that you've got to have down to explain what you're doing, what's going on. Uh, but the established shot is so important because with this, we give the reader the knowledge of where the story is taking place and they can extrapolate from there in other areas and, and kind of remember that establishing shot that got them started. So even though these next few panels, you may not necessarily draw a city every time, they're going to remember that they're in a, in a city type setting um, throughout the uh, the rest of the page, maybe even the next couple pages, until you transition to another part of the story, in which case you would start with another establishing shot. Okay, so there's our basic, pretty ugly city, obviously. I'm not uh, not too happy with this city. I wouldn't want to live there. It looks looks pretty boring. Okay, so there's our city, and then the next shot we would want to make sure that the the direction of the either the artwork or the composition the shapes of shadows whatever we're doing within these panels kind of directs us to this next panel here without having to draw arrows that go like this so to do that we've already got the perspective lines working in that direction so that kind of helps us right there and that was almost subconscious you know so I really didn't have to think about that uh, now the next panel will say our hero is looking down on the city that he protects. And we'll do a basic hero-esque uh, type scene where, you know, he's, he's kind of perched up onto a uh, building. And, you know, doing the superhero boat out chest and one arm back with the clenched fist and the other one held up as if, I don't know, thinking something hero-like. So there's our our next scene and we'll have him kind of perched up on the ledge of one of the buildings so to reinforce the, the initial establishing shot we'll just do a bit of a silhouette of the background city in there 
we don't have to have nearly the amount of detailed information. In fact, it would probably make more sense to have more detail up here, or we'll call our focal point, and a lot less detail in the background, just a hint of information to not be distracting away from our focal point. Uh, oftentimes, a lot of uh, young artists make the mistake of over detailing every possible square inch of the, the uh, page. It's not necessary. In fact, it's, it's oftentimes just dis, uh, distracting. Okay, so now we've got our hero looking down off the building, which say the storytelling told us to, you know, design this panel in such a way. And conveniently enough, he's looking down at the next panel. So again, now we've created that Z pattern that we want in our storytelling for American comics. So we can move down to this next panel and we'll say that he's now, you know, been given uh, an alert to something. Maybe he's got a, a siren that goes off or a signal, but it alerts him. Maybe he hears a sound that, that lets him know something's wrong. So he looks back kind of in reactionary uh, phase. this so he looks back maybe over his shoulder and again to keep that storytelling going the direction that we want we'll have him looking back which would again point us down to this next panel and he doesn't necessarily have to be looking down at that panel you don't want to make it too obvious either so even the fact that he's looking back now pushes the viewer or the reader back to the direction that we wanted and then the natural uh, way to read these books uh, points you in that direction also so just looking back is enough and you can do more than that you can do shapes of shadows and different things to really point the reader you can have arms or legs uh, pointing off in a direction if you can design the uh, anatomy that way so there's a lot of ways to do it this is just I'm just showing you a very basic way to get started and then you can, with the understanding, you can obviously take it uh, and elaborate. So he looks back, maybe kind of a, you know, a mouth open, kind of what, what's happening, what's going on there. Something like that. We'll give him the eyes cut out, superhero mask thingy. You know, whatever. There's our little super dude. Again, I'm not trying to impress you with my drawing at this stage. I'm just trying to show you how to work out the ideas. Uh, now, in this panel, I'll do maybe even no background detail. You know, maybe a few shock lines, something like that. And again, since there's detail information in the background of the first two panels, uh, we really don't have to worry about any de uh, detail background information there. If you want it there, and it lends itself to uh, the design of the panel, then great, but it's not really necessary. Okay, so now this next panel will say, I'll explain the next two. I'll say that he's jumping down from the building now to react to whatever emergency has occurred. And then the next panel, he's running off camera a bit, you know? So what we'll do to explain that is we'll do a nice easy front shot, um, you know, kind of silhouetted in where he's jumping down, like so. All right, so there's our basic shape of the character jumping off a building. And he's got superpowers, so don't worry, he'll be fine. There's some windows and maybe some motion lines. Now, keep in mind too, motion lines are great, but you don't want to overdo them. They can get uh, really easy, you know, they can become a crutch, and you don't want to lose the impact that they have when, when needed for that scene that you really want to add some motion dynamics to. Uh, if you use them on every panel, they're going to lose their luster really fast. And you might just get your viewer a bit of... Uh, Give them a bit of motion sickness, so you don't want to do that. 
So he's jumping down, there's the lines. Now the other thing I'd like to point out in this type of panel, it's good to effectively use your silhouettes. And oftentimes I get a lot of people that ask, you know, how do I accomplish, uh, you know, a book a month or whatever your schedule is, you know, how do I get those pages knocked out quickly like that where you could do something like that? And I would have to say the main thing is to not over, you know, detail things that aren't necessarily needed. The detail's not needed. So when you can, use your silhouettes, use your basic shapes, your geometric shapes, things like that to tell the story. And save that detail for the establishing shots and the things that really need it. So uh, I think that, again, back to the detail thing that a lot of artists just tend to want to over detail every possible square inch of the page. And that's very time intensive, so be aware of that. Okay, so now our hero has landed uh, and he's running off camera. And I'm keeping these angles very basic, you know, front, side, slight three quarter angle, um, just to explain the uh, storytelling process. But, you know, definitely feel free to add a lot more dynamic angles to your work. Now, another thing that you can do to add a little bit of drama to your scenes is to angle the panel itself with or the scene within the frame so this particular one we could take and draw it where he's running you know you could even do something like this where now he's running uphill it immediately gives a little bit more of a feeling that he's fighting to get where he's going even though it's such a simple thing of a line going upward and he's running along this line if the line was going downward it would look like he's he's not expending as much uh energy so it, it's, it's such a tiny thing but things like that can actually add to the uh the storytelling really quickly And here I'd probably do a little bit of background details just because even though we know we're in the city, I would say, you know, where is he at in the city? Is there some residential houses back here? Uh, is he in front of a bunch of commercial buildings in which there'd probably be a lot more traffic type settings or whatever? Uh, we'll say that he's just in the front of, you know, some residential homes. You could do like some stairs coming down, you know, some bushes around the uh, walkway whatever you know so you could fill that in really quickly and again you don't want to have to over detail this you'd keep some of this information basic because your focal point is obviously the hero right here running so I would recommend like maybe shapes of shadows that block out some of this uh, unnecessary space and kind of tighten up the perspective onto the focal point of our hero and keep in mind too that when scenes are further away, uh, you can get away with less detail. You want to get in the habit of drawing things in less detail as they're further away. Um, one of the things that can be a hindrance is when you try to pull in really tight to your scene and over detail something that, well, let's face it, it's going to get shrunk down and either printed or even pulled back to a distance like this where the viewer is trying to view the whole page. So eliminate pulling in too tight and over detailing small segments and areas okay so now what i'm going to explain to you is how panels are basically like beats or pacing to the overall storytelling so let's take for instance that we've got this scene uh this page and we're getting ready to lay it out and we're trying to dictate the pacing of the storytelling that we're getting ready to to explain so let's say that, you know, we've got a bunch of smaller things that are getting ready to be drawn into the storytelling. And, you know, there could be a series of a person walking down the street and the pacing of it all is just kind of bump, 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 bump. And then maybe at the end there's a dun 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 or a dun dun. Sorry for the sound effects, but hopefully you get what I'm saying there. So what we would do is maybe have a bunch of panels that are about the same size. So let's go ahead and create those real fast. Move these around. So something like this. 
And these are nice because, like I said, they give the effect that the storytelling is just kind of moving along at a even pace. None of the scenes inside of each one of these panels will get that added bump in intensity because they're all about the same equivalent size and spacing. So it's just kind of like, again, the beats. Dum, 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 dum. You know, nothing too extravagant. But then the final panel will do not only larger and in front of the uh, bottom two a little bit, like so. Uh, we'll also give it just a little bit of distortion. Now what this does is not only, and, and I'm not going to have it block those other two quite this badly, uh, it not only gives intensity to this shot, I mean we haven't even drawn anything yet, but you can almost start to envision that there's a little bit more intensity to this bottom shot. Um, so it not only does that, but it, it also gives us the effect that maybe something dramatic's happening because of the shape of the panel. So. The increased size um, will give you a little bit more intensity. The change in the shape of the panel will give you even a little bit more intensity. So all those things kind of add up. Let me grab those uh, first few. And I don't want it to block those a lot because I don't want it to... I also don't want to eliminate the tempo of the last panel by blocking it uh, in a large amount. So there's our, there's our layout that gives us, again, those six consecutive beats, and then that last beat that's just a little bit more impactful, and also that it's a little bit longer of a beat or a tempo. So, it, you know, the, the panel's larger, so the viewer, the reader, can now take in more of the information and kind of absorb a little bit more right there of what's going on. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and sketch something in these and see if I can explain a little bit of storytelling uh, based on you know having our panel layout the way that it is and uh, moving along with this type of uh, tempo. Okay so now we'll take our basic uh, panel layouts and we'll introduce some story uh, telling to it. So let's say that our story is someone's walking down the road uh, throughout a city setting and uh, we get some information, some close-up shots uh, describing the character and what they're about, and they're uh, they're a business type character um, that's uh, looking down at their watch. They're a little bit behind schedule, we'll say. So, and then something impactful at the end. We'll just we'll figure that out. So basically, the the storytelling is, you know, we just get a a character walking down the road. So we'll set up a basic perspective lines. Now, I also also always recommend drawing in a little bit of basic perspective to every shot. It makes a lot of sense because it helps you lay in your character in your scene without just, uh, we'll say, winging it, you know, which there's times you're just going to want to feel like drawing freehand, but the, uh, the perspective rulers and guides really help give a foundation to your, uh, your overall development of your scenes. So even if it's just some basic line work like you see me put in here, it goes a long ways. So we've got our character walking down the road, and again, this will just be very thumbnail-ish, very scribbled down, just to get ideas in place. I've tilted the scene. It's probably not too necessary here, but I thought it would be kind of cool just to start the, uh, the scene off with a little bit of flavor there. And what I'm doing is just dropping in enough information now obviously this isn't a larger establishing shot, so I have to kind of you know crunch in a little bit of detail in here just to get us that that information that we're in a uh, a city. You know you want to see some cars in the background. Forgive that really ugly car there, and uh, some people walking. You know there obviously just wouldn't be one person walking unless maybe it's real late at night, but we'll say it's not. So you know there's some people walking by through the scene. And just get, again, just get the overall data down so that you know what you're working with. You can kind of see if this whole thing is going to work out and you can see if you need to change the angle or, or take a different approach. 
you know, so there's our basic establishing shot. Some doors and windows and, you know, stuff like that. Okay. So there it is. All right, so now the next scene, and, and we'll say that real quick that this this is our focal point. There's our character. So the other way that we do that, because right now you wouldn't know if maybe your focal point's this character, this character. So the way to uh, to do that, again, are shapes of shadows. Um, you can do a little bit of just light line work to point in that direction. Uh, you can make sure that when you're shading, maybe this character gets silhouetted out more, or you, you shade the uh, back of the character real heavily. You know, you see our light sources up here somewhere, or at least one of them. So we could shade the back of this character real heavily. And little things you could do, you could also just put more detail into this character. You know, just, and not a, it doesn't have to be real noticeable or a lot more detail, but just little bits of uh, more interesting information into this character will make you, again, pull the viewer right to that spot. So shapes of shadows, a little bit of directionary lines, and uh, amounts of varying detail. Okay, so now we go to the next scene and we'll say that we want to close up, want to get a little bit better idea what this character is all about. So let's go ahead and close up to, I don't know, the feet walking for instance. Now I don't want to point the feet back towards this direction, even though I am trying to keep in mind that the reed needs to go like this, that kind of Z pattern. But I don't want to make it so obvious. And another thing that you want to try to stay away from is flipping camera angles uh, for no real reason other than just to direct the viewer. Uh, you got to be real careful of that. It can get confusing real quick if you start spinning the camera around back and forth, back and forth. It, it, it gets uh, a little bit hard for the viewer to tell where they are in the, the uh, positioning of the story. So I'm not gonna use the, uh, the direction of the anatomy or the foot or whatever to point the viewer back towards the uh, next panel. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that to the, the idea that, you know, that the viewer does know to go from left to right and then down. So on this one, I think it's, especially because the panels are all the same size, I think it's self-explanatory. But I'll show you there's there's other ways to uh, still accomplish that too. So let's take the, uh, let's make sure this guy looks like he's wearing some kind of dress shoe. So again, it gives a little bit more information that maybe they're a professional uh, working type, businessman, something like that. You, know, you can make sure that you make the clothing, the, the pants look a little bit more like the way that dress pants would fold, stuff like that. And I'm gonna try to really make this appear that he's walking here, so. All right, so something like that, a little bit of the sidewalk. Now, we could do a little bit of the texture of the sidewalk, trying to point down to that panel. We can still try to focus on a little bit of our shapes of shadows to kind of encompass this panel and point us back down this way. But again, I think that it's self-explanatory, so don't worry too much about it on this type of uh, panel structure. Now, we'll also have one where the... Uh, uh, the person's hand is carrying a briefcase. So we're just doing these series of kind of close-ups to give us a better idea of who we're looking at walking down the street. So now he's holding the briefcase. So again, it kind of lets us know that he's more than likely a uh, business type individual. And this is a good opportunity here where we can use the shape of the briefcase to point us to that next panel. So we'll go ahead and try that.
maybe a part of the pocket from the uh, the jacket he's wearing some folds in the material Something like that and then again we can do our shadows and try to encompass the area uh, give any kind of focal point the focal point in this would obviously be the briefcase in the hand and the lines from the briefcase perspectively go to that next panel so that works out nicely okay now the next one will say that he's taking he's obviously holding the briefcase with his right hand he's taking and looking down at his left hand to see what time it is so it shows that he's uh you know again it could show that he's a bit of a businessman looking at the, the time but also that he maybe he's in a rush you know and little details you can add in here and say put like Give the guy a really nice watch and he's obviously uh, some maybe somebody that makes a lot of money or whatever you know so you can you can try to incorporate little things like that into the story too and really um, make the reader think about what they're looking at a little more which I don't have a nice watch for reference so I'll just go ahead and draw a basic watch All right, so there's our there's our hand and watch. Pretty crude, I know, but gets the job done. Motion lines, even though it's probably not real necessary on a shot like this. And you can incorporate little background details. You know, again, the sidewalk lines uh, from the distance or whatever. Um, I don't think it's real important on a shot like that, but you're definitely you definitely could do that on something like this okay so now we're getting closer to our our impact shot you know so these have been pretty boring pretty uh, straightforward you know nothing too extravagant there right so we're getting down to the impact shot and we want to show I'm gonna show that the the character is going down the road he's he's carrying his briefcase he's late maybe late for an appointment and all of a sudden at the very last impact shot a car comes speeding towards him so how do we get to that and make it look cool or, or you know lead up to that i should say with these basic panel shots now i want to show you something else that can be fun to do i'm going to show like a i don't know a, a sound effect right in this panel because so i don't think we need too much more explaining up to the impact shot so let's let's do i don't know beep or something or, or you know whatever you would picture being a horn sound, but let's just do a series of E's that get a little bit larger. So I'll draw like these perspective lines and I'll have them point obviously to the next panel. Real quick, just beep. And have it overlapping and going right to the next panel. So it's very directional, you know, it's very, there's no question that it's going right from this panel to the next, and you, know, you could throw some exclamation points, whatever you need to uh, get your sound effect across. You could do the, you know, very traditional uh, sound burst kind of effect. Maybe keep that right in the panel, but have the letters go past the edging of the panel. So obviously a big shock there, you know, and even though the panels are all the same tempo. This obviously changes the tempo of that particular panel, uh, but I think it'll be nice to lead us up to the, uh, you know, the last action scene. So the beep, and then the next one I would picture the guy obviously looking back and freaking out, you know, obviously this is directed towards him. So you would do maybe a bit of an upshot I would say mouth open, kind of expressive and fear. Um, big wide open eyes to kind of take in the information of the approaching danger. Uh, dilated pupils. Eyebrows tilted back. If 
fearful look in the mouth, and, you know, and, and so on and so forth. So you would just do that. Come on, look at my mustache. Some big old bushy eyebrows. All right, so you do that, and that's that would show that okay, this guy's in danger. Uh, this is the same person we've obviously been looking at because that's all we've shown up until this point in detail. So we know who we're dealing with. We know that they're in danger, uh, and he has a mustache, so that's cool. All right, so there's that, and then you know, and obviously you can do some more impact lines or shock lines for that type of scene. And then now, what he's afraid of? What what's got him shocked and fearful. Um, again, I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, the panel to add just a little bit more drama. And I want a few perspective lines to give us an idea what, you know, how to shape the scene. Something like this. And we'll do the, you know, car coming over the horizon. I'll just see as you know, headlights, wheels, top of the, the window. You know, real basic, uh, forgive my really ugly car. I swear I can draw cars better than this, just so you know. All right, so there's our car coming at us full till. And to, to make it look a little bit more impactful, I think it would be kind of neat to maybe just show our character from, you know, legs down, Maybe his, uh, his stance a little bit wide, like, you know, he doesn't know which way to go. Uh, again, reactionary. These are going to be some really horrible legs, but just to get the idea in there. There you go. What hand was he using? Something I'll always remember, you know, um, what hand was what item in. So he's got the briefcase in his right hand. His right hand would be on the side over here. So maybe a little bit of the bottom of the briefcase. Just little things like that are important to uh, remember in your scenes too. You don't want a disappearing briefcase. You want to at least show that he maybe threw it or ran away or something. But Okay, so now here's our basic uh, end scene. And we can really distort these buildings and really add drama and uh, intensity to this uh, scene. Another thing we can do to add a little bit of cool composition to it, uh, obviously remember our light source is back here. I have a picture that he's turned around so we could keep our light source back there if we wanted. We could do a nice heavy shadow on the back of this character. So I would say the focal point's now the car, even though he's definitely the uh, area of impact or the, the uh, where the car is going but I would say still to keep the focal point on the car speeding towards them so you could do some um, silhouetting of the buildings or even you know not even a full silhouette but you could shade them and have the shading kind of point towards and down and towards the uh, vehicle do a few of these motion lines on the ground even, all pointing towards the car. You could even have the uh, larger buildings in the background going across this way. And you could shade those down and do some nice little cross hatching again pointing towards the car and kind of encompassing it or framing it out so just like that i mean again this is obviously very crude but it gets us the necessary information down so that we can look at the scene and and you can just keep going from here and obviously editing and getting your work more uh more polished and changing some things around but with this uh starting point you can you know keep looking at it and elaborate from there and come up uh, with some better ideas. All right, and one more thing to keep in mind while you're designing these panels is obviously where your word balloons are gonna go. And that's really something that you want to incorporate with your composition as you go. I don't picture this type of page being 
very uh, narrator heavy. It could be you, you just whatever your script uh, entails. But a good thing to do is just to draw in a certain amount of negative space, like the spacing in between here, uh, areas that can be covered and still tell a good story. So you just have to make sure as you're designing them that you leave an ample amount of space for where the narrations are going to go. So again, that goes back to not detailing every possible square inch and using some good large areas of shapes of shadows will also lend to that and your spacing between the panels. Now another good technique also for composition and for storytelling is say we didn't have enough city elements in these these panels, which we obviously do in this. You can tell uh, with the information that's here that he's in the city. Uh, but if you didn't have enough of that information, uh, something else that looks kind of neat, I would picture, is that maybe drawing a cityscape in the very background. So something like this, and you could get some windows in there and some shapes of buildings. So something like that, as simple as it is, can also add a lot of cool details to the page. Um, I would say you'd want to maybe ink a lot of it in or, or have a lot of solid black so that it's not too distracting from the panels themselves. But again, it's a, something else that can give a little bit more design to your overall page. And you can use it to re, uh, reinforce some storytelling that's in there. Now, another thing to keep in mind is things like, you know, maybe really stretched out panoramic shots uh, work really well for storytelling or or uh, landscapes, I should say, not storytelling. Um, so say you wanted, I don't know, we'll say some rocky terrain, some really stretched out, horizontally planed uh, rock formations. I will say that's what these little scribbly lines are that I'm putting down. And... To show some scale, we'll put like a cactus way off in the distance, and then maybe another one up close, so it helps us kind of paint the picture of where we're at, something like this. Maybe some tumbleweeds or some bushes, kind of sporadically, and then some different rock uh, shapes. So, so panels that are stretched out like this, panoramically, uh, make for really great landscapes. And uh, so it's picking those panel designs for shots like this that, that really help tell your story too. Um, and keep in mind to always show scale, just incorporate, it could be a silhouette of a person. I mean, the cactuses helped us tell some of this, the scale. People do it really well, even little birds off in the distance like that. You know, a nice big, uh, you know, sun shape. Maybe use that sun shape to uh, direct us to the people on the, on the ridge there. And so on and so forth. You know, and then just, you know, some loose clouds in the background or whatever. So... You know, it's picking different panels that, that make sense to uh, convey the story and the uh, layout of the, the scene that you're trying to draw. So at any rate, hopefully this has been helpful for you and beneficial. Um, I hope you've gained something by watching this, and I definitely appreciate you stopping by. So uh, good luck with it. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel to see new content every week. Check out more of my stuff by clicking the annotations over there. If you want to support my work and get a few goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, ebooks, and get yourself something nice. If you're looking for a great place to collaborate, explore, or share your own content, head over to newgrounds.com. That's it for now, and until next time, see you later.